I wish I could do that. Amen, amen, amen. Certainly seeing that the Spirit of God is alive and well here. Amen. Amen. We know that if there's any reason that we are smiling, we're happy, it's because God is good. We know that every breath that we take, every breath that we take, uh, we take because God allowed us to take that breath. Uh, everything that you overcame this week, you overcame by the power of Christ. Every valley that you you visited and you went through, you went through because of the will of God. And something about how good God is, what God has done in spite of it all, will cause us to come to this place this morning in a jovial spirit and just say, thank you, Jesus, for being so good. Something about how God woke us up this morning we were one heartbeat away from death. Uh, our blood pressure dropped to its lowest point. And, and as we were sleeping, uh, the hand of God moved through our home. And we looked over and saw our loved one. We, we looked over and saw that life uh, was still in us. And, and, and that ought to be enough for somebody to put one foot on the ground and say, thank you, Jesus. Because he didn't have to do it. But he did it because he is so good. And that's why I just love coming together with the people of God because I know I'm with folk who have an appreciation for God. And if you have an appreciation for God this morning, could you give him a hand of praise for all the wonderful things that he's done? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I feel like I'm here with a bunch of holy folk this morning. Praise God. We're ready to praise God this morning. If you will, turn with me to... Uh, the book of Judges, the book of Judges, and just before we start, if you can find your name in this book, you can judge, but if your name is not in this book, you're not one of the judges, amen, uh, but the book of Judges, the chapter is 16, and verse beginning at verse number 20, and then we're going to conclude at verse 28. They have been read into your hearings. We thank uh, Deshaun for reading the scriptures for us. And now we're going to take for a thought this morning, Lord, I'm out here grinding. Can you say that with me? Lord, I'm out here grinding. Grinding is a terminology today used as somebody who is really putting in work at something. Grinding is not new because before the young men begin to sing or they begin to rap about grinding, Samson had already been put to the ground. It's almost an anomaly to, to look at Samson's life but then there is symbolism in Samson's life in that just as God called Samson before he was born and sanctified Samson and justified Samson before he was born, a gift from God, just as Samson had been empowered by God, Samson finds himself now fed, which means he is in the form of a slave. Mm -hmm. He is chained and shackled. He, this man who was once uh, the hero of Israel, one of the judges of Israel, now finds himself in Philistine captivity. Finds himself shackled and being led around and being made a sport of. This man who at one time to help you relate, uh, 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 saw a lion and, 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 and went to the lion and killed the lion with his bare hands. Uh, God empowered him. And the scripture said that when he saw the lion, the spirit of God came into him. And he was able to kill the lion. And on his way back on his journey, he saw some bees eating in the lion's carcass. And he, he took the bees and got honey out of the bees and began to eat 
coming from. This is a bad man. This, this man who was on top of the world. This man who beat the whole army by himself with the jawbone of an ass. Not a gun, not a sword, but took the jawbone of an ass and defeated the whole army by himself. Now finds himself grinding at the mill. Peter told the mush and the goat, this man who can look out and see somebody and say, I'd like to marry her. You remember the incident where in, in, in Judges 14, let's go back and look for a minute. In Judges 14, starting in verse 3, if someone will read this because I want, I want to show you something, how we can be so high and fall so far. Uh, we'll find that Samson here, uh, uh, he sees a woman and he, he finds himself liking this woman. And upon liking this woman, he, he says, I want to I want to be with this woman. Just start at Judges 14, if you will, uh, and start at verse number 1 through 3. And watch, watch what the Bible says. And Samson went down to Timothy. And Samson went down to Timothy. And saw a woman. And he saw a woman. Of daughters of the, of the daughters of the Philistines, read. And he came up and told his father. Came up and told his father. And his mother. And his mother. And said, I have seen a woman. In I've Philistines. seen a woman of the Philistines. And the daughters of the Philistines. Uh-huh. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Get her for me to do what? To wife. To wife. All right. Then his father and his mother said. Then his father and mother advised him. Is there never a woman? Is there not a woman of God? Is there not somebody of the children of Israel that you can marry? Is there is there not somebody that believe like you believe and believe like we believe that understand the one true God? And you know what Samson said to her? Samson looked at his parents and said, get her for me. I found somebody that I like. I don't care about all this other stuff. Get her for me. You see, Samson had one flaw. And that Samson was incredibly uh, selfish. He was, in, he was incredibly arrogant. He was incredibly Indian. Whatever he wanted to do, whatever he wanted to do. And he began to believe his own hype. Right now, I want you to know there are some of you that are sitting around here that are beginning to believe your own stuff. And against the direction of your parents and against the direction of people who know and are telling you to say godly, you're beginning to believe that everything that you have and everything you do, somehow you're in control and have the power to do it. And as a direct result of Samson's foolishness and running behind women and chasing women, uh, he got off track in doing the work of God and then he was working with the people of God and finds himself in our text laying in Delilah's arm. That's not even the same woman that he found that he was leaving God for in the first place. Now he has another woman and, and in verse 20 of our text he's lying and she says honey the Philistines are upon us. Now here's the problem. He is approaching a woman who don't believe God like he believes God. Y'all stay with me right quick. Uh, and, and, and in his process uh, he don't believe God like she believed God because she has more faith in her God than he has in his God. In fact he now she asked him a question. She said, where do you get your power and your strength from? He does not attribute his power and his strength to God. He says, my power and my strength comes from my hair. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not about me, but it's about Elohim. and all the stuff that God has brought you through is not because you so smart. It's not because you so bad. It's not because you out trick somebody. It's not because you fool your mama and your daddy. It's not because you got it going on. It's because of Elohim. And without Elohim, there would be no ill need. Somebody to say amen. Uh, so Samson, now watch this. This is what messed Samson up. Samson, Samson, he takes all the glory and credit and he, he said, and don't realize that in the spiritual realm there's something else going on. And brother and sister, y'all better listen to me because he's in his flesh. And because he's in his flesh, he thinks everything's about him. You know, I would look at folks, somebody say, he made me mad, she made me mad. It's not about them, it's about your flesh. It's not about what somebody's doing to you, it's what God wants to do through you. And you're not getting the picture because you're too busy being into yourself. The reason you cussing folk out and walking around here because you think you bad and you think you got it going on but God had enough of sex and so now for
for the third or fourth time, she kept asking, where do you get your power from? Where do you get your power from? Where do you get your power from? And I realize now that as a man that I am powerless without Jesus. I, I realize that the dumbest thing I can ever do is to get up and try to take on the enemy without the Lord. Amen. The dumbest thing I could ever do, and, and the reason I'm out here grinding is so I've been trying to live without God. And, and, and notice when he is grinding, I, I'm going to preach in just a minute, notice when he is grinding, uh, in those days they would tie him to a socket, he would walk around in a circle. He would push, he would push, and would go nowhere, just go around and around. Isn't that like life, church? Doesn't it feel like sometimes we're just going around and around and around? And I want you to know that some trips are longer than others. You remember the children of Israel went around and around the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. You remember that, that the children of Israel watched the compass of the walls of Jericho seven times. You remember in this text, he's going around and around. He's grinding. And, and, and it's something, and something came to him and said, Brother Hamlet, until you get what Samson didn't get, you're going to keep going around and around in the circle of your life until you understand this is not about you, but it's about him. Church, until we get it together and understand that this ministry is not about us, it's about him, we want to keep going around and around and around. Grinding at the meal and accomplishing absolutely nothing. Well, what do you mean going around and around? Some folk like Samson seem to believe uh, and, 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 and let, me, let me back up just for a minute. Samson had rationalized in his life that the power of the things he had accomplished was because he had a good job as a judge. It was because he was a leader and he was powerful and that he did this and that. That sounds like some of our rationalization. We sometimes seem to rationalize amongst ourselves because we have a job, because we have a place to stay, because we have this and that, that it's about us and that God has absolutely nothing to do with it. And how do you know? Because we make decisions as if the stuff that God has blessed us with, the power that God has blessed us with, all came because we were just better than everybody else. And so we walk around with our hands up talking about I work at Smith and Bailey and I make $75 an hour and I do what I want to with it. This is my money. I pay my bills. I've been get, 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 get it. And I'm not worried about nobody else. But I stopped by to tell you it's not about you, but it's about Elohim. And if you don't do what God says to do with what God has blessed you with, God will take back what God gave you in the first place. You have to Simpson syndrome and that you think that life somehow is all capsulized in what you think, feel, and believe when God is only using you in spite of you. Amen. What do you say? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 if you will. And look at verse number, verse number 17 through 18. Because this is not new, because it's easy to think it's about you. You know, when things are going good, it's about your education, it's about your job, it's about yours. It's not about that. The only reason that you get blessed is one reason God blesses us, and you better understand that church, y'all better hear me right now in the name of Jesus. Hope it goes help me right now. But the only reason you're where you are is that you are supposed to do what God intended for you to do. And if you are not doing what God intended for you to do, God says, I'll take it from you. You're not working to pay your bills. That's about you. You're working, you're working because God has designed an intent for you and your blessing. The reason that you're in the same, you're as broke today as you were in 2000 is because you won't do right by God. Amen. 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 Listen to him. He said, listen, if you say in thy heart that my what? My power. My power and my might, my the mind. might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. If every time you get paid, I gotta pay my bills. I gotta get my chills and stuff. I gotta do this and I got to do that and I got to do this. But you're literally saying, Samson, is that when she asks you, what is the power coming from? You said the power comes from the dollar and not from the Lord. And you can get mad if you want. 
rationalism. Rationalization comes from to ascribe one's acts, one's uh, uh, cause to a superficial or reasonable argument as though it's valid, when actually it's unrelated. Samson ascribed that his power came from his hair. We ascribe that our power and our joy come from the flesh. We ascribe that, and you know something, we're not lying either because ain't no happier day in our life than pain. The best day of work is when direct deposit comes two days before payday. Uh -huh, yeah. You were supposed to pay Monday, but you got it Friday. And you see your God in your account, and all of a sudden, life couldn't be any better. Ah, somebody understand. I wish I had three people full of Holy Ghost right now. Because I'm ascribing and giving power to something that's really superficial and artificial. Because if it wasn't for God, you would have a job in the first place. And I stopped by to tell somebody up in here that if you don't start giving God glory, you're not going to have that job long anyway. God gave, gave Samson a job to judge Israel, to do right by the people of Israel, to defend Israel. God has given you a job, and that job is to support and defend the kingdom of God. It's all false doctrine, ways, and errors to endeavor to keep the fellowship. You have a job to guard fellowship in the church, and the problem is you're not doing your job because you have put a number of God before Jehovah God. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we know better than Samson. I used to read this text and say, oh, he's so stupid. But then I started to realize I'm just as stupid as he is sometimes. Because we all get in our flesh. Am I right about it? But watch what Jesus said. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 42 through 43. And, and let me quickly run over here and finish up. Deuteronomy 8, 7, 8, 17. He said, you're going to say, in your heart, but you shall remember that it's the Lord thy God. For it's he that giveth thee power to give health, that he may establish his covenant, which he has sworn to his father, even to this day. The reason God has blessed you was not for you to buy a bigger house, bigger car, bigger diamond ring, bigger, bigger, bigger necklace, bigger pants, bigger shirt, bigger shoe, bigger, bigger, bigger. It wasn't for that. God blessed you in order to support his church. I didn't hear no amen. And I didn't hear people talking in their flesh talking about, I've given all I'm going to give. And I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> all right, Samson. All right, Samson. Okay, Samson. Okay, now, okay Samson. You, 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 and you know what? You got here grinding. Oh, you got here grinding, sweating, back hurting. Devil got you where you can't even go to church when you want to go to church. You out here, it's, it's, you lucky. You, 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 you so broke down in your spirit, you think $5,000 is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You so took up in your spirit, you think that you get a little piece of blessing. You got to guard it and lay over it and set the police a uh, warning and get a burglar alarm to keep your $2,000 settlement. <laughs> He's making a sport of you. Satan's laughing at you. Look at him. Look at him. Look, God, he took the glory. But then God says this in his word. Now, I want you to watch this, and then we'll start preaching. God says in his word, he says, now listen, you got to understand something. When I give you a blessing, like when I give you a blessing, sister, I'm giving you this blessing to help establish my kingdom. Because I made an earthly promise to Abraham, Abraham Isaac, and Jacob. I, I, I promised Abraham that, 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 that I would establish his coming through his, through his line, through his limits forever. And, 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 and so I'm going to bless folk in order to keep my covenant. But if those folk don't do what they're supposed to do with my blessing, and, 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 and you know if you're grinding right now because, because there's some folk who, that you have never had anything all their life and they don't assimilate or tie into the way they treat the blessings of God with God himself. There are some folk that they know how to, they have been broke so long, they know how to be broke. Well, I know how to be broke. Well, we ain't got no money. Well, we ain't got no money. But I'll tell you what, I know how to do it. You know how I know how to do it? I go over here and I ask this one. I ask that one. I, 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 I get some peanuts. We divide the buy the peanuts up. Because they have given up their blind. Eyes have been poked out by the enemy. But watch God. Watch God. Matthew chapter 21. There's someone there for me. I want to show you 21, 42 to 43. Because God is saying through this text, that Samson, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, and you take the glory from me and give it to give it to yourself, 
then what I'm going to do, I'm going to react from heaven. And I'm going to leave you. You know, listen to the text. The text says that when he woke up this time, that he got up, he got up, he shook himself, like he usually shakes himself, but this time he didn't know that God wasn't with him. Isn't that a scary thought? Isn't that a scary thought to get up and try to take on this world without God? Have you been living without God? Have you tried to take on your enemy without God? Have you, have, have, you, have you ever got up and you thought God was with you, but God wasn't with you? Listen to what the Bible said in Matthew 21, uh, Matthew chapter 21, 40, 40, 42 to 43. Jesus said, did, did you, you ever read them? Jesus said unto them, did you, did you ever read in the scriptures? In the scriptures? The stone with now, 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 now this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, have you not read in the scriptures over something? Have you, not, have, you not, have you not read in the scriptures? Jesus was looking at scriptures then. Mm -hmm. Jesus was looking at the law then. Mm -hmm. And you got folk who don't, who don't even believe in the scriptures now. That are making decisions about God now. But you say, have you not read in the scriptures? The scriptures? Mm -hmm. This is that song. Now oh, watch this. This, this is that song which, which the builders, which the, which which ye builders have rejected. The same is the same the that has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. This is the law, and it's more hold on me. Well, it's not about me. When they rejected Jesus, just one left. It's not that he came his own and the world received him not. When they rejected him, God didn't take it personal because it's the Lord's doing. Uh -huh. Are you listening to me? When he said upon this rock, I'll build my church, he was fulfilling the scriptures to prepare a way for men to get from earth to glory. He said, this is, I'm the son that has been rejected by you and it's not personal. Somebody out of the little round said, it's not personal. It's not personal. I'm going through some, I'm going through trials, but it's not personal. This is not about you. This is about him. And I need to get the message that God has given me. The soul has been rejected. And it's marvelous in our eyes. In other words, when I'm going through some, praise God, when I'm going through hell, if I don't get in my flesh and get in myself, I, I look at what I'm going through not as a travesty, but a chance to triumph in the Lord. Y'all not listening to me right now. See, the part of the reason you don't ever get up from your problems is because you're so tied up in your troubles rather than to look for your triumph that's coming from the Lord. I wish I had three people full of Holy Ghost. Let me say it again. The reason some of your personalities change and your all the egos come out is because you get tied up in your flesh, what you're going through, than rather where God is taking you. God get ready to move you somewhere through your triumph. You might be grinding and then this is going to get good up and good up on tomorrow. You just got to learn how to grind and smile. But I ask you what you're doing is Now watch Samson. 
Samson rejected and put himself before God. God took his power from him and gave Samson over to his hand. <laughs> Y'all see the scriptures? And ne the next thing you find is the fulfillment of John 15, 1 through 4. You know, he says that I am the vine and ye are the branches. Uh -huh. He said, now listen, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you shall uh, provide much fruit. But without me, ye shall do absolutely nothing. With God, Samson to conquer a military army by himself. Uh, with God, he can take a job on an ass and kill thousands. With God, he can bury him, take on a lion. With God, he can just name and claim what he wanted. Uh, with God, he was a judge of Israel. Uh, but without God, uh, he's a clown in a Philistine prison, grinding at the meal and able to do absolutely nothing. I suggest to you this morning that if you're sitting here crying at the meal and you can't accomplish moving your family to a better place, you can't accomplish peace and rest at night, you working hard every day, 40, 50 hours a week, but you're still inside eternally, you're bleeding, you're hurt, you're upset, you're miserable.